All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. We're in Luke chapter 9, Luke 9, verses 10 through 17. And this is one of my very favorite miracles in the Bible. And it's not just because I enjoy food. It's because I love how Jesus cares about people. Jesus cares about people. And I was thinking about this from that old Snickers commercial, you know, hungry, why wait? go to Jesus, right? Hungry, why wait, go to Jesus. And that's what we see here. We're in the 37 miracles of Jesus throughout the Gospels. Uh, We're looking at them in order. And I hope you're growing. I hope you're seeing that Jesus wants to do a miracle in your life. Jesus wants to do a miracle around your life. Every one of these men, women, children, those that were blind, paralyzed, those that were in depression, were demon-possessed, not only did they receive a miracle, but they were somebody's brother. They were someone's sister. They were someone's son or daughter or, or mother or father or uncle or cousin or neighbor or friend. And listen, the Jesus that we serve, the God of the Bible, not the God of this world, not the lowercase gods, not even the false Jesus that many in the world are talking about, the God of the Bible, the Jesus revealed in Scripture, the one who is God, who was crucified, who was buried, and who rose from the dead and who is coming back again, the real Jesus is in the miracle business. Jesus is in the business of changing lives. That's what he does for a living, quite literally. And here in Luke chapter 9, verse 10, Very, very cool miracle. It says, And the apostles, when they had returned, told him all that they had done. Then he took them and went aside privately into a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. Right? Jesus had just sent out the 12 demons were subject in in the name of, in Jesus' name. He said, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice your names are in the Lamb's book of life. Now, Jesus is seeking to bring them away privately. But man, people were paying attention. But when the multitudes, verse 11, knew it, they followed Jesus, and he received them. Listen, whoever goes after God, whoever follows after Jesus, let's be more specific here, whoever follows after Jesus, he won't reject you. Jesus will not reject you. He will not cast you out. He loves you. He is very patient. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 4, and he says, listen, do you despise the goodness of God, the forbearance of God, the long-suffering of God, not knowing that it's, it's actually God's goodness? It's his forbearance. It's his long-suffering that changes you deep inside. It's his love for you. And here we see Jesus being patient with the disciples, And he says, uh, you know, he received the multitudes and spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And he healed those who had need of healing. Listen, anybody who had need of healing, Jesus is in the healing business. Verse 12, watch this. When the day began to wear away, the 12 came and said to him, send the multitude of way that they may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions. For we we are in a deserted place here. They didn't have any provisions. But Jesus said to them, You give them something to eat. He looks at the 12. He looks at the disciples in training. And he says, give them something to eat. Satisfy their hunger. Meet the need. And they looked and said, it's impossible. We don't have the provision for that. They still hadn't tapped in to the heavenly refrigerator, so to say. To the miracle maker, right? To the one who was the provider of all bread, right? And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all those people. For there were about 5,000 men. So that's 5,000 men plus women and children. We're talking thousands of people. Then he said to the disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and he broke them And he gave them to the disciples to set before the multitudes. So they all ate, and notice here, verse 17, were filled. This is a miracle of satisfying, discontented people. You know, the more we try to fill the need inside of us with the things of this world, with the idols, 
the good way to understand what an idol is, it's an eye doll, right? It's something that we make in our own image. It's a man-made thing that we try to consume as if it can satisfy us. It's something that takes the place of God in our lives. And it says here, they all ate and were filled. And notice here, 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by the disciples. Those that were serving got to see not only, not only did God bless the 5,000 men plus women and children who were there with a miraculous provision that wasn't ethereal, it wasn't just a feeling, it was substantial, it was substantive, it was objective, it was real, it was tangible, right? It was food they could eat, it was things that satisfy and nourish their bodies, their minds, their souls. But the disciples who were a part of it didn't just see Jesus meet the need for the multitudes, but each one of them are, is holding in their hands a basket that's overflowing, that's provision for themselves. And that's always real ministry. Real ministry always leaves the minister more refreshed than he was before he came. It's real ministry. And Lord, l- listen, today the Lord wants to bring to your life that hunger, like we said earlier, hungry, why wait? Go to Jesus. He's still in the miracle business. He wants to satisfy you today. And Father, I pray, satisfy your people. Lord Jesus, no candy bar can ever satisfy us. Lord, no job, no person. Lord, no new car, new house, vacation. Lord, no relocation, Lord, can satisfy. We'll we'll find ourselves, like Solomon said, chasing after the wind. But God, you are the satisfier. And Lord, we pray today, satisfy your people miraculously. Meet the, the need that no one has been ever able to meet with your presence, with your word, and by your spirit. We pray it today in Jesus' name. Amen.